Hello everyone and welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share with you a brand new project that I've been working on, a weather app built with React.js. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire process of building this weather app step by step, from setting up the React environment to fetching real-time weather data using the Open Weather Map API. But before we dive into the code, let me tell you why this project is both interesting and incredibly useful. Throughout this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how to implement features such as real-time weather updates, dynamic background changes based on weather conditions, error handling for invalid locations, and more. Plus, I'll share some tips and best practices for optimizing your React code along the way. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this tutorial helpful, subscribe to our channel for more coding tutorials and projects, and let us know in the comments below what other projects you'd like to see next. Okay, so before we jump right into building the project, I'm going to describe it. So in the center of the page, you can see our weather application. It looks like the card. At the top of the application, you can see the location, which is displayed by default. I chose the city where I live. It is a capital city of Georgia. Then below, we have a search input field where we can search for any location in the world. Let's search for different locations, let's say London, Tokyo, then I'm going to search for New York, Paris, and so on. If I enter here some invalid location, then we'll get an error message not found. Okay, so I have six different weather types, clear, clouds, rain, snow, haze, and mist. Each weather type has its own image. I'm in the clouds, the sun, rain, snowflakes, and also we change the backgrounds of the container and the application dynamically. Right now, I'm not going to search for specifically rainy or snowy locations. Then you can play around with different locations on your own. Okay, let's go ahead and describe other features of the application. We have here the temperature displayed in Celsius. Then below you can find the current date, which works dynamically. It's not just hard-coded. Then we have the humidity and also the speed of the wind. All right, so the last thing that I'm going to tell you is that the application is responsive to different screen sizes and devices. If I inspect the page, then switch to the responsive mode and check the project, you'll find that it is responsive. The project is a simple one and I will try to explain everything in detail. But if you have some basic knowledge in React.js, then it would be beneficial for you. Okay, now let's jump right in and build our very own weather app with React.js. So before we start to create our React application, the first thing that I'm going to do is to make sure that you have Node.js installed on your computer. We need Node.js because we are going to create Node modules for our application. And also we're going to use npm, I mean node package manager. So if you don't have node.js installed on your computer, then you can search for node.js and then click here, download node.js and install it. It is quite a simple process, so I'm not going to go through it. Once you install the node.js, then we have to create our React application. So in this tutorial, I'm going to use one of the tools called Vite in order to create the React application. So let's go ahead and search for Vite. So again, Vite is a build tool that lets you configure a development environment for different frameworks such as React, Vue, Swelter and so on. So I'm going to click here, getting started. Here we have the website of the Vite. And now we can find here the commands to create the application. In this case, we have here application for the view. We can copy this command and we will change view into React. So let's copy it. Then I'm going to open this folder, which I have created on the desktop and it is empty right now. Let's open this folder in VS Code. So in order to create React application, we need to open Terminal. In order to open Terminal, we can either click Ctrl plus tilde sign on your keyboard. 
So as you can see, the terminal is open. And also we can go to view and then choose terminal. The terminal will be open. All right, I'm going to paste here the command that we copied from the Vit website. As I said, we have to change view into React. And also I'm going to change the name of the application. In our case, we need here weather dash up. Let's hit enter. Okay, so as you can see, the new folder is created, weather up. Next, I'm going to enter this folder. For that, we need CD and then the name of the folder. It's going to be weather app. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is to install node modules. For that, we need to run here npm install. It will take some time, but it will install node modules. All right, so as you can see, we have here a new folder called node modules. We have here tons of different folders. We're not going to go through all of them. All right, so the only thing that we have to do is to run our application in the browser. For that, we have to insert here npm run dev. So we got here the local host, I mean the URL, localhost 5174. In order to run the project in the browser, we have to click Alt and then click this URL. So as you can see, the application is up and running. All right, I'm going to place the browser and the editor side by side, like so, in order to make our working process simple and convenient. Next, I'm going to go through the folders and the files that were generated. So we have here node modules, public, SRC folder and some files. So as I said, we're not going to go through node modules. Next, we have public in which we have vit.svg file. I'm going to delete this file. We don't need it. Next, in the source folder, we have another folder, assets in which we have react.svg. I'm going to delete this file as well. Then we have app.css, app.jsx, also index.css and main.jsx files. So we don't need app.css. I'm going to delete this file. Next, we have app.jsx in which you can see the code for the application. I'm going to delete this code. Next, I'm going to open index.css file where we have the global styles. I'm going to delete all the styles from here as well. Then I'm going to open main.jsx file. So this is the main file where we import React, React DOM. Also, we import app from app.jsx file. Also, we have here import link for index.css file. And down below, you can see the code which allows us to render the application. Besides that, you can see here index.html file. It is the root file and I'm going to modify it slightly. So I'm going to get rid of this icon. I mean this icon from here. Let's delete link. Next, I'm going to change the title. It's going to be weather up. So as you can see, the title is changed and also we no longer have here the vid icon. Okay, so that's it about the index.html file. I'm going to close main.jsx. The next thing that I'm going to do is to create new folder in the src folder and I'm going to call it components. Inside the components, I'm going to create two files. The first one is going to be weather app.jsx this is going to be the file where we will write all the code and also we need to create the css file which will allow us to style the project so i'm going to call the css file weather app.css okay the next thing that i'm going to do is to create new folder in the assets folder it's going to be images and then i'm going to add images to our project let's copy all five images and add them here. So as you can see, we have here five different images in the images folder. All right, so next I'm going to open weather app.jsx file 
and I'm going to create new component. So in order to create new component, I'm going to use shortcut with the help of one of the packages of the VS Code. I mean, I'm going to use ES7 plus React Redux snippets uh, package. So it will allow us to use some shortcuts. I recommend you to install this package. Now, in order to create new components, I'm going to insert here RAFCE. Once I hit enter, then we'll get here new components. Let's get rid of import. We don't need it for now. Then I'm going to open up the JSX file. I'm going to create here new component. Let's get rid of this line of code. And now I'm going to nest weather up here inside the app. For that, we need here to insert weather app. And then we need closing bracket. Now the text is no longer visible here because we need to import weather app.jsx file here in the app.jsx file. So we need here import weather app from actually we have here the path of the file components weather app. Besides that, I'm going to import the CSS file here. Let's duplicate this line of code, get rid of from and weather app. Now I'm going to add here weather app.css. Okay, so now as you can see the text is displayed on the page. Let's close up the JSX file. We need weather app.jsx file where we will write all the code. Okay, so now I'm going to create here some JSX. Actually, JSX in React is like a mix of JavaScript and HTML. It lets you write HTML like code within your JavaScript files, making it easier to create and manipulate user interfaces instead of separating the markup and logic, JSX allows you to combine them, which then helps in building and maintaining React components efficiently. Okay, so as I said, we have to create the JSX, I mean uh, so-called HTML content, but again, it's not HTML, it's the mix of HTML and JavaScript. Actually, I'm going to zoom in slightly in order to make the code visible so inside the written statement i'm going to get rid of this text and then i'm going to add to the development class actually in regular html we use attribute class but in react we have to use class name not class if you use class then you will get an error so the class name is going to be container then inside the container, I'm going to open div elements with the class name weather up. Then we will have search inside the weather up. So the search will consist of two different parts. The first one is going to be the top side. So we need here search top. So inside the search top elements, we will have two different elements. The first one is going to be icon. As for the second one, it's going to be div elements for the location. So throughout this project, I'm going to use Phone Awesome icons. Therefore, I'm going to go ahead and search for Phone Awesome CDN.js because we have to bring in the CDN link. Let's copy the first link. Next, I'm going to open index.html file and I'm going to open link tag in the head elements. And then we have to paste here the copied CDN. Okay, so the font awesome icons are linked to the project. As I said, we have to insert here a font awesome icon. So we need i elements with the class names FA solid, FA location dots. So as you can see, we have here the location icon. And then, as I said, we need here div elements with the class name location. For now, I'm going to insert here hard-coded location, let's say London. After search top, I'm going to insert second part of the search element. The second part is going to be search bar. Next, inside the search bar, I'm going to insert input with the type text. And also, I'm going to add here placeholder attribute. It's going to be enter location. Next, I'm going to insert here i elements with the classes fa solid 
then we need FA magnifying glass. It's going to be search icon. So as you can see, we have here input elements and then on the right side, you can see this search icon. All right, that's it about this search part. Next, I'm going to insert here div elements with the class name weather. So the first element inside the weather is going to be image. There are a couple of different ways to use images in React. I'm going to import them here in the weather after JSX file. So we need here import. Then I'm going to call the image sunny. We need from. And now I'm going to specify here the path of the image. So we have to exit the current folder. Then we have to access assets folder. Then we need images folder. And now I'm going to select sunny.png. Then I'm going to duplicate this line of code three times. We need cloudy. I mean the image of the clouds. Next I'm going to import rainy. Let's change the name of the image, rainy. And finally we need here snowy. And the name is going to be snowy. Alright, so we imported all four different images here in the weather up the JSX file. Now inside the weather elements I'm going to insert image. Then in the source we can open curl braces and now we have to insert the name of the file. In this case I'm going to use sunny. Then in the alt attribute I'm going to write sunny as well. If I save then we'll get here the image of the sun. Alright, so that's the way how you can display the images in the React application. You can import them and then insert inside the source attribute the name of the file. Alright, so after that I'm going to create another element. It's going to be weather type. And I'm going to insert here clear. Then we need the temperature. So we need development with the class name temp. I'm going to insert here 28 degrees. Actually, I need here Celsius sign. So I'm going to copy it. I have prepared it and then paste it. All right. After that, I'm going to create the date. So we need to open development with the class name weather date. Actually, we need here dash. So inside the weather date, I'm going to insert paragraph and then let's insert here some hard coded date. So today is Friday and I'm going to insert here 3 of May. Okay. After the date, I'm going to open another div element and it's going to be weather data. Inside that element, I'm going to insert two parameters, I mean humidity and wind. So let's open div element with the class name humidity. Then inside the div element, I'm going to open another div with the class name data name. So we need here humidity. Then I'm going to insert here a font awesome icon. So we need I elements with the classes FA solid, FA droplet. So here we have the font awesome icon. Then I'm going to insert here another div element with the class name data. And it's going to be, let's say, 35%. All right, that's it about the humidity. I'm going to duplicate this code and then change the class name. So we need here wind. Then data name is going to be wind. Next we need phono some icon, FA solid, FA wind. And finally I'm going to insert here three kilometers per hour. All right. So I think that's it about the JSX, I mean the HTML contents of our project. Next, I'm going to style those elements. As you remember, we have two CSS files. The first one is index.css, in which I'm going to insert some 
global styles and then we have here weather app.css file in which i'm going to insert the styles for the application itself okay so the first thing that i'm going to do is to bring in one link because we are going to use google font throughout this project so in order to bring in the google font i'm going to go ahead and search for google fonts then i'm going to open this link here and i'm going to search for font called lilita1 so here it is let's click here get font then we need get embed code next i'm going to click here import and grab this url from here let's insert it here in the index.css file so as i said we're going to insert here some common i mean default and global styles i'm going to select every element using an asterisk and i'm going to get rid of default margin and padding let's set both of them to zero next i'm going to set box sizing to border box in this case the width and height of the element will include the padding and the border after that i'm going to define the font family and now i'm going to insert here the font that we grabbed from the google fonts lilita1 and it's going to be sans serif all right so as you can see the default styles are applied to the elements i'm going to add here one more thing so throughout this project i want to use ram as the measurement unit right now by default one ram is equal to 16 pixels because the font size of the html element is equal to 16 pixels i want to convert one ram into 10 pixels and for that we have to decrease the font size of the html element so we need the font size of the html element to be 62.5 so in this case, one RAM will be equal to 10 pixels. And if I save this code, then the size of all the elements will become smaller. Okay, so that's it about the global, I mean default styles. Let's close index.css file and I'm going to open weather app.css file. Actually, I know that this is a React tutorial and maybe you don't want to write the CSS. Then you can feel free, skip this part and grab the code from the source files. But I would recommend to at least watch this part if you don't want to write the CSS code. All right, so now we have to start to style the container. Let's go ahead and select container. Let's define width and height. The width is going to be 100%. Then the height is going to be 100 viewport height. It means that the height of the container will be 100% of the height of the viewport. Next, I'm going to define the background of the container. So I'm going to use background image because I want to use linear gradient function. So we need here linear gradient. And the direction of the color transition is going to be to right. As for the colors, the first color is going to be F3, B0, 7C. As for the second color, I'm going to insert here FCD. 283. So as you can see, the background color of the container is changed and now it looks much better. Next, I'm going to take care of the alignment of the elements. I mean the uh, elements inside the container. So in order to align the elements, we have a couple of different ways in CSS. In this case, I'm going to use CSS flexbox. So we need display flex, then justify content center. We're going to center the content and then we need align items center if you don't know justify content center allows us to center the content horizontally as for the align items center it allows us to center the content vertically okay after that i'm going to hide the image because right now it breaks the layout so i'm going to hide the image so let's go ahead and select weather followed by the image and i'm going to use display none all right so as you can see the content is placed in the center of the page next i'm going to customize the weather app so let's go ahead and select weather app the first thing that i'm going to do is to define the size of the 
weather application. So we need to define a width and height. The width is going to be 35 RAM, which is equal to 350 pixels. As for the height of the app, it's going to be 65 RAM. Then I'm going to change the background and like container, I'm going to use here background image with linear gradient. The only thing that I'm going to do is to change the direction. And in this case, the direction is going to be to top. Okay, so now, as you can see, we have the background for the application. Next, I'm going to make the corners of the application rounded. So let's use border radius with the value of 3 RAM. After that, I'm going to align the content using, again, Flexbox. So we need to display Flex. Next, I'm going to change the direction of the Flex layout. So by default, when you use Display Flex, it aligns elements horizontally in a row. We need to change the direction. We need to place the content vertically in a column. So we need here Flex Direction and it's going to be Column. Okay, after that, I'm going to place the content in the center horizontally. We need to use Align Items Center. By default, Align Item Center allows you to center the elements vertically. But as you see, we changed the direction. Flex Direction is set to Column. Therefore, Align Items Center allows us to center the elements horizontally. Okay, after that, I'm going to create some space inside the application using Padding. And it's going to be 2 RAM. And finally, I'm going to add a little shadow effect to the application. So we need box shadow. The first value is going to be minus 3 RAM because I need shadow on the left side of the element. Next, we need 1 RAM and then 6 RAM. As for the color, it's going to be RGBA. I'm going to pass here black color. We need three zeros and the opacity is going to be 0.1. Okay, so as you can see, we have here nice and cool shadow. Okay, that's it about the weather app. Next, I'm going to select search. And I'm going to take care of the alignment of the content of the search. So we need display flex. Then again, I'm going to change the direction. We need to align elements vertically in a column. So we need flex direction column. And then I'm going to create some space between the elements using row gap. It's going to be one RAM. So by default, row gap allows us to create space between the rows. But because of that, we change the direction. That's why we use the row gap. If we don't change the direction and use just display flex, then we have to use column gap if we want to create some space between the columns. All right. So as you can see, we have space between the top side of the search and the input field. OK, next I'm going to select search top. And I'm going to use again display flex. Next, I'm going to align items in the center. And now, in this case, we need column gap. The value is going to be one RAM. All right, so as you can see, the icon and the text are placed side by side, and we have some space between them. Next, I'm going to take care of the icon. So let's go ahead and select search top, followed by the eye elements. Let's increase the font size. It's going to be 2 RAM. As for the color, I'm going to use 2F2E57. So the icon looks pretty nice. Next, I'm going to select div elements. So we need to search top followed by the div elements. I'm going to change the font size. It's going to be 1.6 RAM. Then we need color, which is going to be 48 four, five, six, nine. Then I'm going to create some space between the letters. We need letter spacing with the value 0.1 RAM. All right, so the top side of the search looks pretty nice. Next, I'm going to take care of the input field. So let's go ahead and select search bar, followed by the input elements. I'm going to define the size of the input. So the width is going to be 25 RAM. As for the height, I'm going to set it to 3.5 RAM. Next, I'm going to make the background color transparent. Also, change the border rate. Also, I'm going to change the border. We need here 0.2 RAM solid, and the color is going to be 
6763694. Let's make the input field rounded using border radius. The value is going to be 3 RAM. So as you can see, the input field looks much better. Next, I'm going to get rid of this default outline. So I'm going to set outline to none. Then I'm going to create some space inside the input field. So we need padding. It's going to be 1 RAM at the top side, then 3 RAM on the right side, 1 RAM at the bottom side, and 1 RAM on the left side. Okay. Next, I'm going to change the font size. It's going to be 1.6 RAM. And then I'm going to change the color that we will enter in the input field. So the color is going to be this one, 484569. Okay, so everything looks good. Next, I'm going to take care of the placeholder. So I'm going to select it. Let's use search bar followed by the input. And then we need placeholder pseudo elements. So I'm going to change the font size. It's going to be 1.4 RAM. And then the color is going to be 7676394. Also, I'm going to create space between the letters. Let's set it to 0.1 RAM. So the placeholder looks pretty nice. The next thing that I'm going to do is to hide the placeholder once we focus the input. So for that, I'm going to use this selector here. Then I'm going to add here focus to the class. So once we focus the input elements, then we should make the color of the placeholder transparent. So as you can see, once we focus the input field, then the placeholder hides. All right, so everything looks good. Next, I'm going to take here of the font awesome icon. I mean the search icon. So let's go ahead and select search bar followed by the eye element. First of all, I'm going to take care of the position of the icon. So we need here position absolute. So in order to position the icon according to the parent element, which in this case is search bar, we need position relative for the search bar. So I'm going to select this element and add to it position relative. Now let's go ahead and define top position. It's going to be 50%. I'm going to center the icon vertically. So we need here transform, translate with the Y direction. And I'm going to insert here minus 50%. So this technique allows us to center the element vertically. I'm in perfect centering. Next, I'm going to define the right position. It's going to be 1.5 frame. So as you can see, now the icon is placed inside the input field. Next, I'm going to increase its size. So we need font size. It's going to be 1.5 RAM. Then I'm going to change the color. Let's set it to 2F2. I'm in this color here. And finally, we need cursor to be pointer. Okay, so everything looks good. And actually with the search, we are done. Next, we have to take care of the weather type. So let's go ahead and select weather type. So let's go ahead and select weather type. First of all, I'm going to define position. It's going to be absolute. Then I'm going to add position relative to the weather up. Next, I'm going to add here to position. It's going to be 48%. Then we need left position with the value of 50%. So in this case, I'm going to center the element horizontally. Therefore, we need here transform with translate X function and with the value minus 50%. So as you can see, the element is placed in the center horizontally. Next, I'm going to increase the font size. Let's make it 2 RAM. Also, I'm going to change the color. Let's select this color here. So that's it about the weather type. Next, I'm going to take care of the temperature. So let's go ahead and select temp. The first thing that I'm going to do is to define the position. It's going to be absolute. Then we need to position to be 55%. And again, I'm going to center the 
element horizontally so we need left position 50 percent and actually i'm going to grab this line of code let's add it here so as you can see the temperature is placed in the center horizontally let's go ahead and increase the font size it's going to be 9 ram and now i'm going to change the background color of the temperature for that we need to use a couple of different properties the first one is going to be background actually let's use background image so i'm going to use linear gradient then the direction of the color transition is going to be to right the first color will be 2f2 then e57 as well the second color i'm going to use here 60 5d 80 so right now as you can see the background is changed of the temperature i mean we have here the box behind the temperature so we don't need that we need to make the temperature look like so so we need here another property and it's going to be webkit background clip and the value is going to be text and finally we need webkit text fill color and the value is going to be transparent so now as you can see the background of the text is changed and we have here nice and cool linear gradient okay after that i'm going to add a little shadow effect to the text so we need text shadow let's insert here minus 0.5 ram then 0.5 ram one ram and the color is going to be rgba black color with the opacity 0.2 okay so as you can see the temperature looks pretty nice next i'm going to take care of the weather date so let's go ahead and select weather date let's set position to absolute then i'm going to set bottom position it's going to be 22 ram actually not ram but percent then we need font size let's set it to 1.6 ram and finally we need color let's use here this color okay so that's it about the date next i'm going to take care of the weather data i mean the humidity and wind so let's go ahead and select weather data so first of all i'm going to define the width it's going to be 100 percent then we need position absolute next i'm going to set bottom position it's going to be two round also let's set display to flex and then create some space between the columns using column gap the value is going to be 2 ram and finally we need padding and i'm going to set padding to zero at the top and bottom sides and 2 ram on the left and right sides okay after that i'm going to select developments inside the weather data i mean this development here and also this element here so for that we need weather data then we need one of the css combinators i mean this one here and then deep element so the first thing that we have to do is to use again flexbox so we need both developments to take up the available space so we need here flex property with the value one and then i'm going to use display flex let's change direction we need here column also i'm going to align items in the center i mean we need to center the content horizontally next i'm going to create gap between the rows let's make it 1.5 ram then i'm going to change the background color let's use here rgba color it's going to be white color so we need 255 three times and then the opacity is going to be 0.2 so we have here the background for the developments after that i'm going to create some space inside the developments the padding is going to be one ram on all four sides and finally let's make those elements rounded using border radius the value is going to be one ram okay after that we have to customize the elements inside the developments i mean those three elements here so the first one is going to be data name we need here data name 
Let's change the font size. It's going to be 1.6 RAM. Then I'm going to change the color. Let's use here color 605T80. Then I'm going to select I elements. I'm in those icons here. So we need here data, actually not data, but weather data, followed by the I element. I'm going to increase the font size. Let's set it to 2 RAM. Then we have color and it's going to be white. And finally, we need text shadow. The values will be minus 0.3 RAM, then 0.3 RAM, 0.5 RAM, and RGBA, black color with the opacity 0.1. Okay, so icons look pretty nice. And finally, we have to customize those values. So we need here data. Let's set font size to 2 RAM. And the color is going to be 2F2E57. Okay, so that's it about the weather data. Everything looks good. And now I'm going to display back the image. So let's find weather image let's get rid of display none the only thing that i'm going to do is to add margin top i'm going to move the image slightly up so we need margin top minus nine ram okay so that's it i think the application looks pretty nice as you can see we have to fix that problem we don't need the scroll bars so in order to fix that problem i'm going to add here overflow hidden Okay, so that's it. The application is customized. Now we have to make it work. So as I said at the beginning of this project, we're going to fetch the real-time data about the weather from Open Weather Map API. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this API. Let's go ahead and search for Open Weather Map. Then click this link here. So here we have the website of Open Weather Map, and the first thing that you have to do is to register on that website and create an account. I have already created an account and I'm not going to go through this process because it is quite simple. So I'm going to click here API, then we have to find current weather data and click here API doc. Our goal is to find the API key, so I'm going to click here API key, then we have to copy this key. Let's go back to the VS Code, open weather app.jsx file, and I'm going to create here new variable, it's going to be API key, and I'm going to paste here the key that we have copied. Alright, so after that I'm going to find the URL which will be used to make an API call. So here we have one of the URLs, but we need to find the URL which has city name and the API key. So I'm going to use this URL here. We have here city name and API key. So I'm going to copy it. Then let's go ahead and create here new function. I'm going to call it search. It's going to be an arrow function. Inside the arrow function, I'm going to create a new variable. It's going to be URL. And I'm going to place here the copied URL. Let's open quotes and place here the URL. So we have here city name and API key. I'm going to change those variables with some hard-coded data. Instead of city name, I'm going to insert here, let's say, London. As for the API key, I'm going to grab this key from here and paste it here. After that, I want to make an API call. And for that, I'm going to use one of the VS Code packages called Thunder Client. So let's go ahead and install this package. I'm going to click it, then click New Request. And we can paste here the URL. Actually, this is an API key. We need the URL, so I'm going to copy the entire URL. Then go back to the new request, paste here the URL, and click send. Okay, so here we go. We have here a response in JSON format, and we have here all the data that we're going to use. So if you check this out, you will find here 
for example name London then we have here country Great Britain also you can see here temperature which for now is shown in Kelvin we have to convert it in Celsius so here we have all the data we have here clouds then minimum and maximum temperatures and so on so as I said we have to convert Kelvin in Celsius and I'm going to do that quite simply so I'm going to insert here and ampersand then we need units equal to metric now if I click again send then we will get temperature in Celsius all right let's go ahead and copy this URL and paste it here so again we have here hard-coded location London and also hard-coded key so I'm going to change those variables and make them dynamic for that first of all we need to wrap the URL with backticks instead of quotes we need here backticks then I'm going to get rid of key and instead of that I'm going to place here dollar sign then square brackets and I'm going to pass here API key as for the location I'm going to take care of that in a minute the next thing that I'm going to do is to create another variable and it's going to be response so we have to use the fetch function to make a get request to the API endpoint specified by the URL so the variable response should be equal to fetch method and we have to pass here URL it should wait for the response using the await keyword so we have to pass here await and also we need another keyword here async so the async keyword before a function declaration indicates that the function will operate asynchronously this means that it can pause execution to wait for an asynchronous operation to complete without blocking the execution of other code so the next thing that we have to do is to convert the response from the API call into the JSON format and then store the data into the variable but before that I'm going to create state in a simple and concise way state in react is like a container that holds information about a component it has data that can change over time and can influence what the component renders on the screen you can think of it as variables that react components can keep track of and update when needed so if you have some basic knowledge in react then you would be already familiar with state in order to create state I'm going to insert here const followed by the square brackets and I'm going to insert here data and then set data it should be equal to method called useState and as the argument I'm going to pass here an empty object next we need to import useState from react all right so use state is a hook provided by react that allows functional components to manage state it returns an array with two elements the current state value and a function to update that value so here the returned array from use state is being destructured into two variables data and set data data represents the current state value which is initially set to an empty object set data is a function used to update the state value so again we have initialized the state where the initial state value for data is set to an empty object and it means that data will initially hold an empty object and then it can be updated later using set data so the next thing that i'm going to do is to create another variable and it's going to be search data it should be equal to response dot json method so this method allows us to convert response into json format and again we have to add here a wait keyword okay so in order to understand those things better i'm going to run to the console search data then in order to display the response in console we have to call the search function and I'm going to do that here we need to call the search function once we click the search icon so I'm going to add here on click event handler and we have to pass here search 
All right, let's open developer tools. Then we need console. Now, if I click the icon, then we will get here response. I mean the same response which we have here in Thunder client. As you can see, we have here all the properties and values about the weather in London. All right, so everything works perfectly. Now we have to update the state. I mean, we have to add here set data and I'm going to pass here search data. Once the state is updated, now we can use data here down below in order to grab some information from the response. The next thing that we have to do is to make the location dynamic in the URL. Right now we have hard-coded location London. So for that I'm going to create another state. Let's insert here location. Then we need set location. And it should be equal to use state. And I'm going to pass here an empty string. Now instead of London, I'm going to insert here dollar sign and then the variable location. Also we have to update the state and set the location to an empty string. So now the next thing that we have to do is to grab the entered value from the input field. So once the user enters the location here inside the input field, then we have to access that value. For that, I'm going to create new function and it's going to be handle input change. It should be equal to an arrow function. I'm going to pass here an event object. And now we have to update the state. I mean, we need set location and it's going to be e.target.value. After that, I'm going to find the input elements. So here we have it. So we need to pass here value and it should be equal to location. And also we need here on change event handler. And I'm going to pass here function handle input change. Okay, so this function is an event handler for the on change event of the input field. When the value of the input field changes, then this function is called. It extracts the new value of the input field from the event object, specifically from e.target.value. It then updates the state variable location with a new value using the set location function. The value attribute, I mean the value attribute here is set to the state variable location, which means the input field will display the current value of location. The onChange attribute is set to the handle input change function, which means that whenever the value of the input field changes, the handle input change function will be called to update the location state variable. Let's test if everything works fine. I'm going to enter here New York. Let's click the icon. So, as you can see, we got here response in which we have the information about the weather in New York. We have here name, New York, and all the data. Okay, so everything works perfectly. Now we have to update the data in our JSX dynamically. Let's go ahead and change the location and display it in the app. So we have to find the location. And instead of hard-coded London, I'm going to insert here data.name. We are grabbing this property here, name, with the value, in this case, New York. Okay, so if I save it, now as you can see, the location is updated and we have here New York. If I insert here Paris and click the icon, then the location will be updated. Okay, so right now we are updating the location by clicking the icon. And I want to do the same once we hit the enter key as well. So for that, I'm going to create a new function. Let's call it handle key down. It should be equal to an arrow function. I'm going to pass here an event object. So now we have to use an if statement where we have to check if the key is equal to enter. So we need if statement, then e.key. 
is equal to enter. If this condition is true, then we have to call the search function. Next, we have to call this function, handle key down, once we press the key. So we need here on key down event handler, and we have to pass here function handle key down. Okay, so now if I enter here, let's say Milan and hit enter, then the location will be updated. So everything works fine. Next, I'm going to change the hard coded temperature. We have here 28 degrees and I'm going to change it dynamically. So let's go ahead and find temperature. Here we have it. I'm going to insert here data dot main dot temp. I mean, in the main property, we have here temperature. So we need data dot main dot temperature. Now, if I save, as you can see, we have here the updated temperature. Let's search for another location. Let's say Tokyo. Now, as you can see, the temperature is updated. Actually, we have here a tiny issue. Once I reloaded the page, we got here errors saying that cannot read properties of undefined. So the error occurs because the data object initially contains an empty object as its default value when we use use state, I mean this empty object here. Therefore, when you try to access data.main.temp, it's equivalent to trying to access an empty object dot main dot temp, which results in main being undefined. And then we have the error. So to prevent this error, you need to ensure that data.main exists before trying to access its properties. In order to do that, I'm going to add here data.main, then ternary operator. So if this part is truthy, then we need here data.main.temp and if it is falsy, then we need here null. Actually, I'm going to grab this Celsius sign from here and paste it here. But as you guessed, we need here to open backtick. Then we need to round the temperature because as you remember, it was displaying the decimals. We don't need it. So I'm going to use here math dot floor method which allows us to round the number now we need to close the square bracket let's add it here okay so i think everything's correct let's reload the page enter the locations then i'm going to place here london belisi okay so everything works fine we no longer have here the errors so next time when we update the data dynamically, we need to use this technique. So the next thing that I'm going to update is weather type. I mean, if the weather is clear or if we have clouds, rain, snow and so on. So I'm going to get rid of clear from here. Then I'm going to open square brackets. Now we need data weather. In the same way we need here ternary operator, then data.weather. Let's find this property. So we have here weather, then we have the index number zero. So we need here index number zero. And we have to grab the value of main. Right now we have clouds. So let's add here dot main. And then we need again null. Okay, so in Tbilisi we have clouds, let's check New York, we have clear, then I'm going to check Tokyo, in Tokyo we have clear, let's search for, I don't know, Milan, we have clouds, okay, that's enough, next I'm going to update humidity and wind, so we need here to open square brackets, we need data dot main. We have the percentage of the humidity in main. So here we have it, humidity 82%. So we need data dot main 
then again ternary operator then we need data dot main dot humidity and then we need null okay so we have here 73 percent let's search for berlin we have 77 percent in berlin all right let's take care of the speed of the wind so i'm going to open square brackets we need data dot wind we have the property wind here in the response so if it is true then we need data dot wind dot speed here we have the speed and then we need now okay let's check for barcelona so as you can see the speed is equal to 6.17 Alright, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to prevent the API call if the input field is empty. I mean, if I click now the icon, then we will get an error saying that we have bad request. Okay, so in order to prevent it, I'm going to add here if statement in which we need location dot trim not equals to an empty string so this condition checks if the trimmed location string is not equal to an empty string in other words it checks if the location string contains any non white space characters if it does contain non white space characters then the condition evaluates to true and the code block inside the if statement executes otherwise if the location string is empty or contains only white space characters the condition evaluates to false and the code block inside the if statement is skipped. So we need to place the entire code inside the if statement. Okay, now if I click the icon, then we won't have here any bad requests. The next thing that I'm going to do is to display the default location once the application is loaded. Before we search for any locations, I want something to be displayed. For that, I'm going to use another hook called useEffect. So, what is useEffect hook? useEffect is a React hook used for handling side effects in functional components. Side effects in React components typically include operations such as data fetching, subscriptions, or manually changing the DOM. In our case, to display the weather of a default location before the user enters any location in the input field, you can modify your use effect hook to fetch weather data for a default location when the component mounts so we need to import use effect hook then i'm going to insert here use effect we need to pass here a callback function it's going to be the first parameter and also we need the second parameter and it's going to be an empty array so the first argument is a function that contains the code for the side effect you want to perform. This function will be executed after every render. The second argument is an optional dependency array. It allows you to specify which state or props variables the effect depends on. If any of the variables listed in the dependency array change between renders, the effect will rerun. If the dependency array is empty, then the effect will only run once after the initial render. Now I'm going to create here a new function, which will be similar to a search function. So I'm going to call the function fetch default weather. It should be equal to asynchronous function. Then I'm going to create new variable. It's going to be default location. I'm going to choose Tbilisi. Actually, we need to wrap the value with quotes. Next, we need URL. And I'm going to grab the URL from here. So instead of location, I'm going to add here default location. Next, we need again 
response await then we need fetch function with URL then I'm going to create another variable and it's going to be default data it should be equal to await response dot json I'm writing the similar code here but for the default location and finally we need to update the state so we need set data and I'm going to pass here default data so as you can see we have here an error invalid hook call hooks can only be called inside of the body of a function component yes we need to place use effect inside the function whether up after the state that's my mistake so still we don't have here the default location actually we need to call this function here fetch default weather now it should work okay so here we go we have here to see with the weather information so anytime when the application loads, we will get here the default location. You can choose any of the locations you like. It's up to you. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to change the images depending on the weather type. I mean those images here. Now, right now we have here sun, but the weather type is clouds. So we need to change the images depending on the weather type. Let's go ahead and create new variable. It's going to be weather images and it's going to be an object. So I'm going to add here properties like clear. In case of clear weather, we need image sunny. Then the next one is going to be clouds and we need image cloudy. Next, we will have here rain. The image is going to be rainy. Next, we have snow. We need snowy. And then we have haze. I'm going to add here cloudy again. And finally, we have mist. And I'm going to add cloudy again. Oops, we need here cloudy. All right. After that, I'm going to create new variable it's going to be weather image it should be equal to data dot weather then we need a ternary operator so if it is true if data dot weather exists then we need weather images and we have to grab data dot weather we need index number zero and then main so again, if data that weather exists, then we select the proper image and actually we need here null. And now we have to define the source of the image. So here we have source right now. It's hard coded sunny instead of sunny. We need here weather image. Okay, so here we go. We have here clouds. Now let's search for another location. So let's say Paris. We have sun. Then in Tokyo, we have sun. Let's search for London. In London, we have clouds. Let's go ahead and search for, let's say, Barrow. In Barrow, we have snow. All right, so everything works perfectly. Let's go ahead and take care of the background images of the container and also the application itself i'm going to create a new variable it's going to be background images it's going to be an object so i'm going to insert here different backgrounds for different weather types i'm going to start with clear in case of clear, I'm going to grab the background from here. We need this background. 
then we will have clouds. Let's paste the background and I'm going to change the colors. So the first color is going to be 57D64. Then the second color is going to be 71EEEC. Then the next weather type is rain. Let's place here linear gradient. So the first color in case of the rain is going to be 5B. C8 FB. As for the second color, I'm going to insert here 80 E A F F. Then we will have snow. So we need here the first color A F F 2 F F. As for the second color, I'm going to insert here white F F F. Then we have haze. In case of haze, I'm going to use this background. And then we need mist. And again, let's use the same background. All right, so once the object with background images is ready, next I'm going to create another variable. It's going to be background image. Then it should be equal to data weather. We are going to use the same technique, so data weather, then we need a ternary operator. If it is truthy, so we need background image. And we have to pass here data dot weather. Then again, in this number zero, followed by main. If this is not truthy, then we need here as the default background, the first one. So I'm going to grab this background. And I'm going to paste it here. Next, I'm going to change the background color. I mean the background image of the container. So we need here style property. And I'm going to pass here background image. Okay. Now I think everything's correct. No, we have here an error. Cannot access background image before initialization. So let's check the code. We have here background images and we should have here background images, not background image. Now it should work. And yes, as you can see, the background of the container changed. Now let's search for barrel. Now it's no longer snowing in barrel. So let's go ahead and check Paris. So as you can see in Paris, we have clear weather and the background is changed okay let's search for tokyo in tokyo we have clear let's search for milan now in milan it's raining so the image is changed and also we have here different background everything's perfect next we have to change the background of the weather application so let's go ahead and search for weather app i'm going to add here style Then we need background image. So in case of the weather apps background image, we need to change the direction of the color transition. In case of the container, we had here two right. As for the weather app, we need two top. So again, we have to change the direction of the color transition. For that, we have to use a replace method. But before that, we need to check if background image is truthy and if it has a replace method. So we need here background image, then end operator, followed by background image dot replace. If it is truthy, then we need a ternary operator. And now we have to replace the direction. So we need background image dot replace instead of two right we need two top if the condition is not truthy then we need 
null. So again, the same technique that we used a couple of times in this project. Okay, so as you can see, the background image of the application is changed. Let's search for London. Now we have the same result. Let's search for New York. So as you can see, everything works fine. All right, so that's it about the background images for the container and for the weather application. Next, I'm going to take care of the dates. Right now we have hard-coded dates and I'm going to make it dynamic. So for that, we need to create new variable. It's going to be current dates and it should be equal to a date object. We need new date. After that, I'm going to create another variable. It's going to be days of week. And I'm going to make it equal to an array in which we have to pass the days of the week. Let's go ahead and start with Sunday. Then we will have Monday. Next one is going to be Tuesday. Then we will have Wednesday. Next we have Thursday. Then Friday. And finally Saturday. So these are the days of the week. Now we need months. So let's create a new variable. It's going to be months. And it should be equal to, again, an array. I'm going to pass here names of the months. Let's start with the January. Then we have Fab. Then March. April. May. The next one is June. Then we have July, August, September, and then we have October, next one is November, and finally we need here December. Okay, so everything's ready. Next I'm going to define the day of the week. So I'm going to add here day of week and it should be equal to days of week and as the index number I'm going to insert here current date dot get day so let me explain what's happening here I'm going to run to the console new date dot get day actually we need it here the parenthesis so now as you can see we have here six because today is saturday and the index number of saturday is six so we are getting here the index number of the day of the week and therefore then we are selecting the proper day from this array in the same way we have to select the month so we need here const month it should be equal to months and we have to insert here current dates dot get month so if we test here new date dot get month So as you can see, we have here four because we have May and the index number of May is four. So it is the fifth item in the array. And as you know, index numbers are zero based. So therefore the index number of May is four. So that's the way how get month works. And finally, we need to create another variable. It's going to be day of month. It should be equal to current date. Actually, we need here current date dot get date. So if we check this method, we need new date dot get date. It is four because right now it's already fourth of May. All right, now we have to format the date string. I'm going to add here const 
format it. Actually, we don't need here capital F. Formatted dates, and it's going to be equal to template literal. We need here dollar sign, then day of week. Then we need comma. The next one is going to be day of month. And finally, we need month. Okay, so the date is formatted, and now we have to pass it here in JSX. Let's find the date, get rid of this hard-coded date. We need here formatted date. Okay, so as you can see, the date is updated. Now it's Saturday, 4th of May. All right, so that's it about the date. Next, I'm going to take care of the not found message. I mean, if we enter here some dummy characters and then hit enter, we should get not found with this emoji. Okay, so let's take care of that. I'm going to insert if statement here inside the search function. So we need if statement in which we have to check if search data dot code actually code is one of the properties in the response. As you can see, code is equal to 200. It means that the response is successful. And if we have better request, then code will be equal to 400. Okay, so we have to check if search data dot code not equals to 200. If this is true, then we need to set data to an object in which we will have property called not found and it should be equal to true. Then in the else statement, if we have successful request, then we need those two lines. Okay, now we have to update the JSX. Let's go ahead and create new element here. So we need not found right after the search bar. So let's find here input field. It is search bar. We have here search. So we need to create here new elements. But before that, I'm going to open square brackets. So we need to check if data dot not found is truthy. If it is, then we need to create new element. So we need here div elements. It should have class name and it's going to be not found. And as the text I'm going to insert here, not found. And then I'm going to use one of the emojis. So we need to press window and dot. And I'm going to select this emoji here. So if it is truthy, then we create the new elements. But if it is falsy, then we need to create fragments. And we have to pass here almost entire code. Let's paste it here. Okay, so hopefully everything's correct. Now if I enter some dummy characters, then we will get not found. All right, so everything works fine. Now we have to customize this message. Let's go ahead and open CSS file. After search, I'm going to select not found. Let's increase font size. It's going to be 3 RAM. Then I'm going to change the color. Let's use here this color. Then we need margin top to be 5 RAM. And finally, I'm going to set text shadow to minus 0.3 RAM. Then we have 0.5 RAM, 1 RAM. And we need RGBA. 0, 0, 0, 
0.2. Now let's insert some dummy characters and everything's great. Okay, so that's it about the not found message. Next, I'm going to take care of the loader GIF because if I reload the page, then for a second we will get here the broken image with text sunny. I hope you see it. So in order to hide it with loader, we have to do the following. I'm going to import loader from the images folder. Let's import loader. Actually not loader, but loading diff from I'm going to use the same path. Let's select loading GIF. Okay, after that I'm going to create new state. So we need here loading, then set loading, then the argument of the use state function is going to be false by default. So we got here an error. Does this file exist? Actually, what we need here, loading.gif, it is an extension. Okay. Now we have created new state, loading, set loading, and use state with false value. Then inside the use effect, I mean inside this function here, I'm going to set loading to true. And then after updating the state, I'm going to set loading to false. Also, we need to set loading to false in the search function after if statement. So we need to set loading to false. And now we have to update the JSX. Let's go down and find the message not found. So here we have it. So I'm going to add here loading with ternary operator. If it is truthy, then we need parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I'm going to create new elements. It's going to be an image with the class name loader. Then we need source attribute, and it's going to be loading gif. Then we need alt attribute. It's going to be loading. And finally, we need to place here a colon. So I think everything's correct. And you can see here the loader, which right now is too big. So I'm going to customize it in CSS file. Let's go ahead and select loader. I'm going to set it width to 5 RAM. And then we need margin top 10 RAM. Okay, so as you can see, now the loader looks pretty nice. Alright, so I think that's it. We have finished working on our projects. Everything works fine. And hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial. So if you like this video, then please thumbs up, comment below, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell so you never miss our upcoming tutorials. Alright, see you next time.